Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to be doing my week 5 NFL recap. Uh, we're going to recap the week 5 slate, just talk about how it went. We're going to look at my picks from my week 5 video that I uploaded on Thursday. We're also going to take a look at some of the lineups that I played. We're going to look at my cash game lineup and a couple of GPP lineups that I had in like 3 entry max contests. Uh, this is a new series that I did that I introduced last week in week 4 uh, where I kind of just talked about my lineups. Um, talked about how my picks did. do want to be as transparent with you guys as possible. So uh, we're going to take a look at my picks first, then we'll go through, look at my lineups, and then we'll sort of just do a quick review of how the week went. Uh, it was definitely a crazy week in terms of scores. Some of the scores in GPPs were crazy high. A lot of the chalk plays really, really hit, uh, hit big. Like uh, Will Fuller was pretty popular, and I liked him a lot. He smashed. Uh, Michael Thomas was pretty popular, and he did really well. Aaron Jones had a little bit of ownership, and he smashed. Uh, Deshaun Watson was one of the highest-owned quarterbacks, and he had a great game as well. And anytime that's the case where you have a lot of high-owned players uh, put up big games, you're going to see scores be really, really high. I think in double-ups, you needed like just over 200 points to cash. I believe my cash game lineup finished with like 230-something. We'll take a look at that once we get there. But uh, we're going to start off with my lineups, or start off with my picks for my Week 5 video. Just before we do get started, guys, I would definitely appreciate it if you would drop a like on this video. Let me know down in the comments uh, how your week five went. Who are some of the guys that you played that might have smashed or if you missed on some plays today? Feel free to leave that down below in the comment section as well. I definitely missed on some plays. I did have a lot of exposure to the guys that did well, like Thomas, Aaron Jones, Will Fuller. Uh, but definitely missed on some. Like I was pretty exposed to DeAndre Hopkins. He didn't do that well. Uh, I really like Noah Fett as a cheap tight end. He did not do well, so... I definitely missed on some plays. We'll talk about that once we uh, get in the next slide. Uh, but let me know how in the, uh, down in the comments how your week five went. Like I said, it was a really crazy week. I think the winning GPP lineup in the Millionaire Maker was like 330-something or 340-something. Just probably one of the craziest weeks we've had quite some time. Uh, but also make sure you guys click that subscribe button down below. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Click the bell as well. Uh, click the bell next to the subscribe button so that way... You get notified every time I upload, and you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. Uh, but we're going to start off with my picks from my Week 5 video that I uploaded. Look at the uh, guys that did well. Look at some of the guys that maybe did a little bit poor. And we'll just kind of talk through each player. So starting off with the good side, looking at some of the uh, picks that did well. At quarterback, I, I mentioned two quarterbacks in my Week 5 video, Deshaun Watson and Andy Dalton. Deshaun Watson was a good play going for 44.74 DraftKings points. Uh, it was just a great spot for Deshaun Watson. It was a great spot for the Texans in general. Uh, it was a great game to target the Texans and Falcons game. I liked Watson a lot here at home. He was definitely the quarterback that I wanted to pay up for. Uh, the Texans had just been in some really tough matchups, and now they were finally getting a good matchup at home against a bad Falcons defense, a bad Falcons secondary. Uh, so I thought this was a pretty clear blow-up spot for the Texans. I wanted as much exposure to them as possible. And obviously it started with Deshaun Watson. Really liked him, so he was a good play at 44.74. Uh, Christian McCaffrey going for 50 DraftKings points. Honestly, not even surprised that McCaffrey put up 50 DK points. He's just so talented. He's going to be a guy that I try and jam in pretty much every week if I can. Uh, he's just one of the highest upside running backs in the league. I'd say he probably is the highest upside running back in the league. He barely comes off the field. He's going to play a ton of snaps. He's going to be on the field in pretty much every possible situation whether they're at the goal line and they need to punch it in, if they're needing to pass, and uh, they can look to McCaffrey as well. Loved McCaffrey here. I believe he finished with like 180 rushing yards, three touchdowns. It was just a monster game from Christian McCaffrey. Uh, definitely was a guy that I was trying to pay up for as much as possible. Uh, but the next guy that did really well was Aaron Jones going for 52.2. Honestly did not expect this big of a performance from Aaron Jones, but he was a guy that I definitely wanted exposure to. Uh, he was only 5900 on DraftKings. I like Jones a lot just given that price tag of 5900 with Jamal Williams out. It was going to be Aaron Jones' backfield. He was going to get pretty much all the work. Uh, they did give, uh, I can't even remember who it was, the backup. They did give him a little bit of uh, work. He did get some touches, but it was mainly Aaron Jones doing all, the, uh, doing all the heavy lifting in the backfield for the Packers. Can't remember how many uh, actual touches he finished with, but I know he had four rushing touchdowns. Uh, it was just a monster game, 52.2 DraftKings points. Aaron Jones was one of the highest scoring players on the slate, if not the high scoring, just right behind Will Fuller. Uh, so Aaron Jones was a great play at 52.2. I uh, was on Michael Thomas quite a bit. 
Michael Thomas was just so underpriced here. 6,600, facing a bad Buccaneer secondary. Uh, the Saints were playing at home where we know the Saints have just played very well throughout their tenure at the Superdome. Um, even with Bridgewater at quarterback, Michael Thomas had been putting up very solid numbers. He was a guy that I wanted to be overweight on. I did play him in cash. I thought he was a clear cash play at that price tag. Uh, I can't remember what his final line was, but I know he got into the end zone twice, had over 100 yards. It was a really big game from Michael Thomas going for 44.2. Uh, the next guy that I was on that I liked a lot was Will Fuller. Uh, Will Fuller was one of those plays you just had to have today. He was pretty popular. I think in the single entry double up, the $10 single entry double up, he was like 40% owned. Uh, if you didn't have Will Fuller, you were pretty much toast. If you didn't have like one of Will Fuller, Thomas, or McCaffrey, uh, you were probably done in cash games. Like You had to have at least one of those three guys, if not two of the three. Luckily, I had all three in my cash game lineups. So that was what helped me win today. But uh, Will Fuller was a stud play here. I just really liked the spot. He was so cheap at 4500 I was very high on all the Texans receivers. I was high on the Texans offense in general. Uh, Fuller had, have, had had a lot of tough matchups. He finally was getting a good matchup against a bad Falcons defense, a bad Falcons secondary. Fuller was still seeing the targets every week, even though he wasn't producing, even though the, the game log wasn't very pretty. He was still getting seven, eight targets a game. Anytime you get a receiver for that cheap, getting seven, eight targets a game, especially a receiver like Will Fuller that has a lot of upside, a lot of big play potential, I think that's something you always want to look for. Even in cash, you always want to try and find guys that at least have a little bit of upside. Did not expect Will Fuller to go for 56 DraftKings points. I think he finished with like almost 200 yards, three touchdowns. It was a monster game from Will Fuller. I honestly think he had over 200 yards. And I know he got tackled twice at the one-yard line, so he honestly could have had five touchdowns. Uh, one of the best performances we've seen in a long time from a receiver. And luckily I was on him. So uh, Will Fuller was a play that worked out very well. And then I do give a, one defense that I like for cheap. Usually it's a cheap defense, and my cheap defense this week was the Steelers. I just like the spot for them at home against the Ravens. I thought the game was going to be a little bit more low scoring than it was. I thought the Steelers' off, or defense looked very good in that Monday night game against the Bengals. I felt like they were going to be able to put a little bit of pressure on Lamar Jackson, and they kind of did. I think they finished with uh, like maybe three or four sacks. I know they got a couple interceptions as well. Uh, so the Steelers' D was a solid pick at only 2,100, getting 11 DraftKings points from a cheap defense for only 2,100. Uh, it was a very good play. So those were all the picks that did re uh, really well. My good picks were like smash picks. I didn't really have any picks just do like okay. But now we will get over to the bad side. I do want to talk about both sides. Don't just want to talk about the good plays. Uh, so I did put stars beside Andy Dalton and Auden Tate. Andy Dalton was a play that I liked a lot. He finished with 18.98. Auden Tate was a value receiver that I thought was a pretty clear uh, value receiver. He finished with 11.6. Uh, Dalton and Tate necessarily weren't bad plays. I did put this down here at the bottom. Uh, Dalton and Tate weren't necessarily bad plays for their price tag. I think Dalton was 5,900. Getting almost 19 DraftKings points from a $5,900 quarterback is not that bad value, uh, not that bad of a play. And same can be said for Alden Tate. Alden Tate was 3,500. He finished with 11.6 DK points. Getting over 11 DK points from a cheap receiver under 4K is not a bad play either, but on this slate where scores were so high, you, on, you weren't going to be able to take anything down with Tate and Dalton in your lineup, so that's why I included them on the bad side. I guess I could have put them on the good side, but honestly felt like uh, on this slate, if you didn't have like these guys like Jones, Thomas, McCaffrey, Fuller, those pretty much, if you didn't have them, you weren't really taking anything down. Like, I had some lineups where I had all four of, like, McCaffrey, Jones, Thomas, and Fuller. But then I had, like, Dalton and Tate in those lineups, and that really just killed my chances of taking down anything big. But anyway, Dalton was a guy that I did like a lot here at home against the, uh, against the Cardinals. Cardinals defense just been so bad this year. I thought it was a get-right spot for Andy Dalton. Uh, he had been performing pretty well before that Monday night game against the Steelers. Going back home for only 5700 I used him in cash. He was my cash game quarterback. Uh, it was looking really bad after the first half. I think he only had 25 yards in the first half. He literally had one drafting point in the first half. And then he came out strong in the second half and got 17 DK points just in the second half alone. Uh, threw for two touchdowns over 200 yards. Uh, so kind of salvage the day. But uh, Andy Dalton, 18.98. Not necessarily a bad play, but not really a great play either. Uh, David Johnson was definitely a disappointment for his price. 7,500, only giving you 18.6 DK points. Definitely is not going to get the job done. Uh, Johnson was a guy that I liked a lot here against the Bengals. Uh, we did see Chase Edmonds run in a touchdown. Uh, Johnson 
I believe did get injured late in the game. He did get like a back injury and he did lose some snaps to Chase Edmonds. Uh, we saw Edmonds enter the game late or enter into the game late uh, later in the game. And Edmonds did get a long rushing, uh, rushing touchdown. So obviously if Johnson doesn't get, get hurt, that rushing t- uh, touchdown could have went to him. But either way, Johnson didn't really come through. Honestly, thought he would have had a much better game. Wasn't necessarily a terrible play, but not really a great play either for 7,500, especially not on this slate. Uh, the next guy that I was really high on in that mid-range was David Montgomery. Uh, he was a big disappointment, only going for 10.6 DK points. And the Raider, or the Bears in general were just a big disappointment here. They got beat by the Raiders. I was not expecting that. I was expecting the Bears to have a lead for a lot of the game. I thought Montgomery was going to get a ton of work. And the Bears got down early. Like I think they were losing like 14-0 or 17-0. Montgomery luckily got like a two-yard touchdown, which kind of salvaged his day. If he doesn't get that two-yard touchdown, he's going to be a terrible play. But really wasn't a good play either. Only 10.6 DK points for 5,200. Uh, that was definitely... A play that I missed on, I, I expected Montgomery to ha- just have a much better game. I thought he was going to see a ton of work. I thought the game script was going to favor him. I liked the matchup against the Raiders. I uh, just didn't go as planned. Uh, the next guy, DeAndre Hopkins. This was a big disappointment. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, I thought, was going to have like the Will Fuller game, like the 10 catch, 150 yards, two touchdowns. Like, I thought that was going to be the kind of game we were going to get from DeAndre Hopkins. He only finished with 15.8 DK points. I believe he did fall a little bit short of the 100-yard bonus. So if he gets the 100-yard bonus, uh, you're obviously looking at a little bit of a better situation for Hopkins. But still, anytime one receiver uh, just gets as much uh, volume as Fuller was getting, I think Fuller got 16 targets, three touchdowns. Anytime that's the case, uh, a guy like Hopkins just isn't going to produce well. So honestly, I'd play DeAndre Hopkins again in this spot. The matchup was so good. I thought it was an eruption spot for him. Uh, it was just kind of that Will Fuller was a guy that had the eruption, not Hopkins. Uh, but either way, looking on to the next guy was Auden Tate. Uh, I thought this was a clear value play going into the week with John Ross out. Auden Tate was already playing a ton of snaps. You only thought, or you would only think the snap share would increase with John Ross out. He was seeing a lot of targets as well. It was a great matchup against a bad, a bad Cardinals defense. A Cardinals defense that's still metric, uh, missing Patrick Peterson, who is their best corner. Really liked Auden Tate. He did kind of salvage his day late, pretty much just like Andy Dalton did. Late in the game, I believe it was late in the third or fourth quarter, uh, Tate got a really short touchdown, like a two- or three-yard touchdown, uh, which kind of salvaged his day. But 11.6 from a $3,500 receiver, I wouldn't necessarily say that was a bad play, but on this slate where you needed over 300 points to take down any tournament, uh, 11.6, it really isn't going to get the job done. Uh, then lastly, Noah Fant. This was a big, big disappointment. I did... Uh, play quite a bit of Noah Fant. He was in my cash game lineup, and he was in one of my three main GPP lineups. He only finished with one catch for six yards. Uh, just didn't get the volume. Very surprised that the uh, Broncos came out firing in this game. The Broncos had a 17 nothing lead, I believe, to start the game, or 14 nothing lead. So they didn't really throw the ball much. They didn't really have to. And Fant just didn't, or when Flacco's not throwing the ball a ton, Fant's not going to get the volume. I was expecting the Chargers to come out in this game and get a big lead to start off with, which was going to make uh, the Broncos or force the Broncos to throw. And I thought Fant, uh, just a young athletic tight end, was going to get a few targets, was going to be on the field plenty. And that just wasn't the case. I knew Tyler Eifert was going to be a tight end that a lot of people look to, and I just didn't feel that good about that play. Eifert just hasn't been playing a ton of snaps, whereas a guy like Noah Fant seeing his snap share increase, he's a young athletic tight end. Uh, I thought the volume would be there, and that just wasn't the case. Tight end was a position I didn't really see any standout plays, so I was just trying to punt so that way I could get up to the studs that I wanted at the running back position, like McCaffrey, like Zeke, uh, like David Johnson. But Noah Fant, definitely a play that I whiffed on quite a bit this week. Uh, But that's it for my picks for my Week 5 video. Now we'll take a look at my lineups real quickly uh, before we end the video. So these were my main four lineups that I played, my cash game lineup and then my three GPP lineups. Uh, So in cash games, I pretty much... Uh, just like ate the chalk. I played a lot of chalk plays. Uh, McCaffrey, uh, David Johnson, Michael Thomas, Wolf Fuller, Alden Tate, Ezekiel Elliott were all very high owned. The only sort of low owned plays I had in cash were Andy Dalton, Noah Fant, and the Steelers defense. I believe in the $10 single entry double up, Andy Dalton was like 7% owned. Noah Fant was like 8% owned, and the Steelers defense was, I believe, 10% owned. I knew at the beginning of the week, uh, just looking at the slate, that I wanted to pay up for McCaffrey. I wanted to pay up for David Johnson. 
And if I could fit in like Ezekiel Elliott or Dalvin Cook, I was trying to go to, or I was going to try and do that as well. And just seeing all the cheap receiver options we had with Auden Tate, I really liked Will Fuller for cash. Thought he was pretty safe. I thought he brought a lot of upside. I knew I was going to go to him. Michael Thomas was underpriced at 6,600. I knew he was a receiver I was penciled in. I pretty much penciled in like six of my nine plays this week. I knew I was going to play McCaffrey, Thomas, or McCaffrey, Thomas, Fuller, Tate, Zeke, and David Johnson. So it was pretty much what was I going to do at quarterback, tight end, and defense. Was I going to play like a really cheap quarterback? Like there were a couple guys I was looking at. I was looking to go down to uh, potentially Teddy Bridgewater at 5,200, which obviously would have been a smart way to go. I did have enough salary to play Matt Ryan, which would have been a much better play than going to Andy Dalton. Matt Ryan was someone I was considering for cash. I could, or I was trying to get up to Deshaun Watson, but if I wanted to play Deshaun Watson, I would have to got, or I would have to got off of either Michael Thomas, or I would have had to drop down off of Ezekiel Elliott or David Johnson. And I didn't just, I didn't feel very comfortable with that, especially with the guys I was dropping down to. I knew I wanted McCaffrey in there. It was just uh, paying up for Johnson and Elliott. Was I going to do that? And it, it was able to work with Dalton, so I was fine taking that route. Obviously, the best route to go would have probably been to jam in Deshaun Watson and then either downgrade one of Johnson or Elliott. I could have downgraded from like Johnson to Aaron Jones, and then I could have upgraded a tight end, which would have been pretty much the stone nuts, which I was kind of looking at that. But uh, either way, it was a solid week in cash games. I finished with 230.48 in my cash game lineup. My three GPP lineups, uh, one of them was pretty solid. My second lineup, a 217. Uh, my third lineup, I believe, was able to bubble a couple tournaments. I was able to make like half my money back in that one with a 196. And then my other lineup didn't do very well with just a 176. Crazy to say 176 is, an, is not a good score. But on this slate, you pretty much need to over 200 to even min cash. So 176 not going to get the job done. But we'll look at these three GPP lineups real quick. Uh, my first one, I had a Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins stack. And then I ran it back with Julio Jones. Had David Johnson correlated with Auden Tate. David Montgomery, talked about him in my picks video. I really like David Montgomery. Had Noah Fant in this lineup. Um, had Aaron Jones in this lineup. And then had the Panthers D, who I did like as a cheap defense. Uh, in my second lineup, I went with a Matt Ryan to Julio Jones stack. And then I ran it back with Will Fuller. Uh, then I have Christian McCaffrey, David Montgomery, Auden Tate, Darren Waller, Austin Eckler, and the Chargers D. Uh, Austin Eckler was someone that I wanted to have exposure to in GPPs. I didn't feel like Melvin Gordon was going to get all the work. Uh, we got a lot of reports throughout the week that Austin Eckler, uh, Austin Eckler was still going to be heavily involved, even with Melvin Gordon active. And that was the case. I believe Eckler got like 10 catches for 80 yards. I believe he did get into the end zone, if I'm not mistaken. He had a pretty solid game in general. He was still heavily involved. And his price tag dropped a lot. He was down to 6700 on DraftKings. I knew I wanted him in at least one of my three main GPP lineups. Uh, but now we'll look at the third GPP lineup real quick before we end the video. So this one I went with Andy Dalton to Tyler Boyd. Uh, this was a lineup where I faded Auden Tate. I didn't want Auden Tate in all my four main lineups. So I took him out of, or I didn't play him in the last one. This one I went with a Dalton to Boyd stack. And then I ran it back with David Johnson and Larry Fitzgerald. Had Dalvin Cook in this lineup, who I did want some exposure to. I wasn't going to be, or I wasn't going to be heavily exposed to him, but I knew I wanted him in at least one of my four GPP lineups because Dalvin Cook's just that good of a running back. Uh, but then I had Will Fuller in this lineup, which obviously went really well. Had Greg Olson, who was a big disappointment. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, tight end was a position I didn't feel like there was any standout plays. Greg Olson for only 4K I thought was a pretty safe option. Him putting up a zero was very surprising to me. Uh, so that was a big disappointment. I was still able to cash some lineups with a zero from Olsen. I also had Devontae Freeman in this lineup who I did talk about in my week five video as a sleeper, as a potential guy to look to, maybe like a pivot away from David Montgomery. I knew Freeman wasn't going to or wasn't going to be very highly owned. I like the matchup as well against the Texans. Uh, the Texans are another team like the Falcons that have given up a lot of receptions to running backs this year. And Devontae Freeman, a lot of his work in the backfield comes from the receiving end. He does get plenty of targets. I uh, felt like this game had a lot of shootout potential. The Falcons were going to be throwing, so... Freeman was someone I correlated in this lineup with Will Fuller. And then I full punted defense with the Steelers defense as well, uh, only 2,100. But these are my main lineups this week, my three GPP lineups and my cash game team. Overall, it was a very solid week uh, just in general. 
my cash game lineup did cash on uh, pretty much everything I played it in. I did lose a couple of head-to-heads. I think I played like 80 head-to-heads. I might have lost like five or ten of those. I did play a lot of three-mans as well, and I did lose a few three-mans, but I was mostly profitable in pretty much every contest I played in with my cash game lineup. Uh, could have definitely been a monstrous week in GPPs if I had the right combinations of all the players that I was on. I had some smash plays in cash like Will Fuller, Michael Thomas, Christian McCaffrey, but I did have a lot of those smash plays surrounded by some duds like Noah Fant, Auden Tate wasn't that great, David Johnson wasn't that great, uh, Dalton wasn't that great. So if I have like if I just do a couple of changes, if I uh, don't pay it, or if I don't go down to Fant and I pay up for a different tight end, then I go down from like Zeke or Johnson to Aaron Jones. That could have been probably I pretty much would have swept everything I played in in cash if I would have went that route. But either way, it was still a pretty Solid week. I was able to come out with more money than I started with, which is always the pretty much always the goal in playing DFS. You're not going to get rich every slate, but if you win a little bit of money, that's all you can ask for. So we're on to week six. Um, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. Make sure you drop a like down below. Uh, be, be sure to leave any comments, any questions, any feedback down below in the comment section as well. Feel free to let me know how your week five went, if there were some plays you missed on, if there were some plays that uh, did well for you. Feel free to comment that down below. As always, appreciate uh, appreciate your guys' feedback. Also, you'll notice on the screen I have a video coming up, my most recent video, most likely my uh, Monday Night Football Showdown video. So if you want to check that out, I would really appreciate it. Also, you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot as well. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you in my next video, which will most likely be my Week 6 first look. So uh, good luck, guys. Peace.